Good morning. It is good to see everybody this morning. Uh, it is good to hear everybody say good morning. I enjoy hearing it. Uh, I like to tell people good morning. I like to hear good morning because it's a, a great way to start our day. Say we're glad to be here. Uh, and, and just saying hello and just the, the cordiality that comes with that. Just the, the togetherness of it. I really, really enjoy it. I really do. We start thinking about this morning. This morning's lesson is undesirable worship. Undesirable worship are things that God doesn't want. Now, this may be a little different what you think it's going to be. We've seen it. I put it out in the bulletin. It's been on the board for a week. And, and we think about it now thinking, well, the undesirable worship, I know these are things that God just doesn't want. And so we're going to talk about acts of worship, things like instrumental music or things that we have concluded God doesn't want. But that's not what this lesson is about. That's not what this lesson is about at all. In fact, it concludes those things. But that's not the focus of today. When we start thinking about the worship the Lord requires, it's important to understand there's certain offerings that God is not pleased with. When you look at the word worship, there are four words translated worship. The first one means uh, to give the utmost respect. The word translated is proskuneo. It means to, to, to bow down before, to, to kiss the ground toward. The idea is that God is here and we're bowing down in his presence. The utmost respect. The second one is to show reverence means that God is God and I'm not. It's saying that there are things about God that I cannot hope to attain. I'm not as good as, as God is. I'm not as loving as God is. I'm not as caring or merciful as God is. God is the highest, most supreme being that we'll ever know. And we revere his presence. It's to honor religiously. This is we do those things that God desires for us to do. The, the things that God has outlined you know, for us to, to praise his name with. And then the last one is to act pious or do the, the right things or act in a a religious kind of way. When we read about worship, those are the words that are given. You know, sit back. We're like, uh oh. When we showed up this morning, what was we expecting to do while we were here? I have preached this sermon a number of times. I've given it many, many different different titles. Now, one of them is Wednesday. Wednesday. Another one is the church isn't a country club and the offerings not your club dues. That's another time. It's not just a place that we just come together and say, oh, I was here. And I check it off and say, I'm glad they saw me. At least nobody's going to call and find out where I was. See, if, if we're here for those reasons, we really need to listen to some undesirable worship that's happening. In fact, the way that Paul writes this in the Colossian letter, in Colossians chapter 2, we find that he is writing to a people who have regulations. There's things that they are holding on to. And as they hold on to these, they look really good. But they're not as good as they think. Notice, uh, starting in verse 20 in Colossians 2, Therefore, if you die with Christ with the basic principles of the world, so living in the world, you subject yourselves to regulations. Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle. Which all concern things which perish with the using, according to the commandments and doctrines of men. Now notice some things that are there. Because I do believe there are things that we should be doing. There's things that we should not be partaking in. I believe that. What Paul is saying, according to the commandments of who? The commandments of men. See, there were, there's a time when people say, this is how we worship God. This is the right, this is the wrong, and we do that. Realize the reason the Pharisees did not like Jesus wasn't so much because he went around doing good to people. It was because he had a problem with what? Their teaching. They would not allow certain people to act and behave in certain ways. Why? Because it broke their commandments. And these are the 
religious leaders of the day, the teachers of the law. And they made law so much burdened with heavy bearings and that Jesus even said they wouldn't even lift their finger to, to ease any of that. I'm like, wow, that's tough. And notice again how Paul describes this. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion. They look to be wise. They fit the part. It looks that way. False humility and neglect of the body are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. They were offering a worship that did them no good. That's hard to think about, isn't it? That's really hard to swallow. <clears throat> that there are people who are teaching things and living a certain way that is of no value. It doesn't help them any. Like, that's tough. It's really, really hard. And I would like to say, when we look at Isaiah here in just a moment, we look at Leviticus, when we look at Acts chapter 5, when we start reading these different passages, I, I wish, and I, my, my whole heart is saying, that's the only time we're ever going to think about these things. But the reality is this. If we are not careful, we'll have to deal with these things every single week. Because worshiping God is a particular thing. It's not a Sunday thing. It's not a Wednesday night thing. When we start worshiping God, what well, the idea is that Sunday morning is the culmination of the bringing together of all the things that we've done this week. I didn't get anything out of that. Well, what did you bring? What did you bring? See, that's the question. What did you bring to get the love? What, what was this week like for you? Who is it we're trying to worship anyway? And so as we get these, these, these different different acts, different ideas of worship, these different times where God is like, it says, I'm not happy with this. I want us to realize if we get the mentality that we're just going through emotion, we are no better than they are. And it's important, ever important to our spiritual health that we understand that. So let's go ahead and start looking at Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 1, 3, 10. Notice Son of Gomorrah has already been destroyed. It was destroyed way back in the book of Genesis. It's no longer around. And what does Isaiah call God's people? That's who he's prophesying to. He calls them Sodomites and Gormites. He says, you guys are evil. You guys are wicked. Now notice, these are God's people. So what are they doing? Why are they so wicked? To what purpose is your, the multitude of your sacrifices to me? What, why is it that you come and offer worship? What, what's the reason? I have had enough of burnt offerings of ram and the fat of thick cattle. I do not like the blood of bulls and goats, of uh, bulls or of lambs or goats. So wait a minute. Who told her to worship this way? Well, God did over and over and over in the book of Leviticus. In fact, if you start reading that book, the first chapter, we've done exactly in our prepared offering. You don't get very far. So did God want them to do this? Yes, but there's something they're missing. There's something they're missing. See, they were doing the worship, but there's something they're missing. Hosea tells us, Hosea chapter 6, verse 6, he desires mercy more than her offering. Desires obedience more than fat rams. Ah, <clears throat> oh, see, there's something. But they were doing it. They weren't doing it. They weren't really doing it. When you come before me, who's a party from, from your hand to, to trample my courts? Bring them our futile sacrifices. Incense is an abomination to me. The new moon, the Sabbath, the calling of assemblies. I do not endure iniquity and a sacred meaning. I do not endure sinfulness as you're worshiping. Who told them to gather? God did. God did. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. What did they do on the Sabbath day? 
They worship God. How do they do it? The way you outline in the book of Leviticus. So what's the problem? They're looking good, but they're not doing what they're supposed to. It looks very good, but they're not doing what they're supposed to. They're leaving the heart away. Notice in verse 14, your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. When the Lord says, I hate what you're doing, that is in fact. Look at the exclamation point in it. They are, they are troubling me. I'm weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are up. What's the reason? Who are they worshiping? They're not worshiping God. They're going But they're appeasing themselves. Themselves. I've changed the way I talk about Sunday mornings a long time ago. I used to say we have to go to church. We have to go. Now you look at me like he's a preacher, of course. He needs to be there. I mean, it's kind of important. If there's no preacher there, then somebody's going to get to speak, right? Why did I change it? Because you don't really have to go. And this is what I mean by that. There's lots of people that are not here that are not dead. So what do you say instead? I get to go. I get to go worship. I get to go sing with the saints. I get to go pray with the saints. I get to go worship the Lord. I get to remember Jesus. I get to do that. honor to do that. You know, there are people who love to be sitting right here beside us. They would love to be right here. And they can't get out of the bed. Sitting right here. They would love to be listening face to face and can hear these things. They could, they could say hello and they love seeing each other. And they're not able to leave a room and so you don't have to. You get to. There's a heart thing there. There's a heart thing there. Let's look again. Malachi chapter 1. Malachi has an issue. So generally when we read about the prophets, there's, there's a problem. And then God sends a mouthpiece. And as he sends a mouthpiece, they get to learn in here. See, Isaiah happened before the captivity. Before Babylon comes and takes them away. Malachi happens when they come back and they're not building the temple although they're supposed to. And as they're doing, as they're going through these things, there's, there's a big, big problem. Notice what he says in Malachi chapter 1, starting verse 7. You offered defiled food on my altar. But say, in what way have we defiled you? By saying the, Lord, the table of the Lord is contemptible, or means to be despised. And when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it to your governor. Will he be pleased with you? Will he be pleased with you? Says the Lord God hosts. What is he saying? Oh, they're bringing stuff. They're calling it a sacrifice. It's lame. It can't walk. Now, if you're a farmer and you have an animal, how much is that worth to you? Well, it's not any good. Well, they understood that, so what were they doing? Let's get rid of it. Let's just give it to God. Give God what I don't want. How good is a blind animal to you? Blind animal don't see tr trouble coming. Blind animal can't survive on its own. You've got to sit and watch and care for it. If you're a farmer, that's an issue. If you're a shepherd, that's an issue. So what we want, let's just give it to the Lord. Let's just give the Lord what we don't want. If we give him what we don't want, at least we did it. But what does the Lord think about that? What does he think about that? Now, if you sat back and wondered about this, if we gave our employer the same type of devotion that we give to God, we won't be there very long. 
if we pay taxes like we give offerings, or we're going, uh, is there going to be knocking? Are they going to be knocking on our door? Is somebody going to call us up? See, when we start thinking about that idea, worship's a lot more than just showing up. It really is. It, we, we had this saying when I was younger, uh, and, and I say it every now and again, I still say it's the same. Uh, if, you walk, if you talk the talk, you better walk the walk. And that's reality. If I tell God I'm on your side, then what, whose side should I be on? I'm going to be on what side. If I say I'm in the Lord's army, who should I be on? I should be fighting for the Lord. That's who, I, that's who it is. And what are these people not doing? They say I'm there, but they're rooting for the poor. My heart is not with them. My heart is with them. It's gone. I like to say that at the end. That's, that's after they come back. I like to say at the New Testament, everybody got it right. I would love to say that the heart was right in the New Testament. And it's not. Sadly, it's not. And at the end of Acts chapter 4, we run across a man named Barnabas. His name could be son of a prophet. It could mean consolation. It, it could be a several different things. When we come in contact with him in Acts chapter 4, we see he had a of property, and he brought all the money, gave it to the apostles, so they could help others. The first word in Acts chapter 5, but, you know who they were, very nice and spot. They saw what happened. They saw it. How do you know? Because that there's the word but there. And the word but there indicates what's going to happen next is in contrast. And what happens is Ananias and Sapphira, they have some land. And they sell the land. And they take part of it and give it to the, uh, the apostle Peter. And the rest of it they held back. Now Peter makes the the conclusion that when it was in their hand they could do whatever they wanted to with it. They could do just whatever they wanted to. But they lied in that they gave a certain amount of money and said, this is all we got for it. In other words, Lord, I'm giving you everything. I'm going to hold nothing. And I falls dead. Now, what would life be like if somebody said things like that and they just fell dead? It don't happen that way. So they carry him out and bury him. So fire comes in. So fire, did you sell the property for such and such? Yes. The men, the feet of the men that carried your husband out will carry you as well. Dead. They lied to the Holy Spirit. See, that's the thing about God. God knows exactly what our hearts want. He knows exactly what we're feeling. We can't fool him. We can't trick him. They lie. First Corinthians chapter 11. We go to First Corinthians chapter 11 and we remember. We remember this as a section where we talk about the word suffering. In fact, there are many times, you may have heard this section of scripture read many times, before the Lord's Lord Supper is observed. And rightly so. Because Paul tells them again what they're supposed to be doing. If he's telling them what they're supposed to be doing, that means they're not doing it. They're doing something else instead. And notice what he says here. Starting in verse 17. Now in giving these instructions, I do not praise you, since you come together not for the better, but from the, for the worse. Now, an interesting note, start looking back from chapter 11 to chapter 14. What you're going to find is the Corinthian brethren had no problem coming together. 
They had no problem coming together. Four or five times it is said they have come together. So coming together wasn't an issue. But he has to give them instruction. What is this? For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear there are divisions among you, and in part I believe it. Now wait a minute, you're coming together and you're divided? Paul says, I believe it. I believe it. Why? For there must also be factions among you that those who are approved may be recognized. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it's not to towards supper. Now wait a minute, they're coming together to eat the Lord's Supper, but Paul's saying, no, that's not why you're coming together. Why should there be a division? Because those who do it right are noticed. Those who are doing it correct, you can see them. Which also means those who are not doing it correctly, you can, you can see them. You can recognize them. There have to be some there because everybody isn't doing what is right. Verse 21, for in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of others. And one is hungry, and other is drunk or satiated, had enough. What do you what do you, do you know? drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? I, I shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. That's a message, isn't it? That's your message right there. If they're not waiting on each other, they're not looking after each other. They're just going ahead. Let's get this over with. And if somebody wasn't able to bring something, what's all bad about them? You want to talk about heart issues? This is one of them. We look at this one. Wow. You mean just showing up, singing a few songs, enduring yet another message? Is it enough? No. No. It's not enough. See, if God wanted us as robots, He'd make us as robots. See, that's the beauty of free will. Free will means you get to decide. You get to decide. You have a choice. See, it's not been taken away. You can honor God, which is your reasonable service, Romans 12, verse 2, or not. See, I mentioned last week, there are two words, there are two words people have a real hard time with. Accountability and responsibility. We are accountable to a most holy God, some of us don't even know. But when we find out what God wants and desires that we should be, we are responsible to act in such a way. See, one, one church I said this way, God doesn't want we can visit, He wants full custody. He doesn't want us just for dip whenever it's convenient for us. He wants us all the time. And if you sit down and think about the question, why did Jesus get upset when we're selling things in the temple? They had the ability to do that. The, Levi the book of Leviticus says such. They had the ability. If somebody traveled a far away, they could come purchase something and they could offer it. They had that right. What was the problem? They were cheating each other, first of all. It was usually is a way to make gain versus give a provision. And when he saw he got upset, what did he do? He flipped the tables. Why did he do that? Zeal for your house has eaten me up. Could you imagine how many times we went to that synagogue before? We went to the temple rather and worship and saw that stuff. And you know that they were right. How do you know they knew they were right? Nobody stopped him. There was no arrest of Jesus. He did it. And so we start looking at this. When we worship in an undesirable, unholy way, 
there's something that happens. 1 Corinthians 11, 17, what was it? We become a divided people. God never wants us divided. If you read, you cannot read Ephesians chapter 4 and come to the conclusion he wants us divided. In fact, he wants us to strive for unity and the bond of peace. He wants us to be together, unified. He doesn't want us divided. Why not? What was Jesus' words? A house divided cannot stand. Why? To tear each other apart. And if you ever want to see that, split the news on them. You will see it. He is there. Separation. Micah chapter 1 verse 8. You will pray to me and I'll have my eyes for you. Separate. I'm not going to look at Isaiah 59 1 and 10. It's not the hand that the Lord's hand is so short he cannot, cannot save. Not ears he cannot hear. But your sins have separated you from your God. Your iniquity. Notice that. What does he point to? Why were they struggling? What they were doing? The sin separated them. Anger. Anger. Turn our Bibles over to Genesis chapter 4. We had a, we had a deal there with Cain and Abel. And when Cain and Abel, they were offered, this time of them were offered a sacrifice. When Abel offered the sacrifice, God was well pleased. Why? Hebrews 11, he did it by faith. When Cain offered the sacrifice, God was displeased. Why? He did not do it by faith. Cain's countenance fell. You can see it in his face. Something was wrong. The Lord warned him. said, you know, if, you not, if you do well, will you not also be received? He went and killed his brother. He didn't do the right thing. Amen. A bunch of different ways. There's different ways that we can label worship that God doesn't desire. We say it's will worship. We worship whatever we will. Call it false worship or worshiping, worshiping something that is not true. We call it idolatry. We call it whatever we want to call it. What does God call it? Sin. God calls it sin. And it should break our heart. It should break our hearts when we put what we think and what we feel over and above what God wants and desires. But here can we sit back and we know that God doesn't want evil for us. God doesn't want us separated. God doesn't want us separate from each other nor from Him. He wants us to be united together with Him. Jesus says it's best in, in John chapter 17. Father, as you and I are one, make them who believe one. He wants us all unified. It's important for us to understand. This morning, how do you worship? Here, why do you come here? See, next week, next week's going to be a good lesson. Next week is Force of Lord desires. This should make us really good. I hope and pray it does. But we sit back and say our worship is lacking. We're not who we need to be. Our heart isn't right. I'm afraid you're going to call me if I don't show up. You know, I've called several people since I've been here. I never once called to make them show up. The mind goes that way. I just want to know how you're doing. Is there anyone I can help? We're not living right today. We're not worshiping right today. The question I want to ask to you, and you owe it to yourself to answer, is why not? Why not? This morning, if you're a child of God and you're not living right, you're not worshiping right, why not repent, pray, and come back to Him? We can pray with you, we can pray for you. And if we can help you, let us know. If you've not yet put Christ on baptism for the forgiveness and remission of sins, why not that burden any longer? You don't need it. And the truth will set you free. If 
feel no need to outside salvation. You need to experience. And that's how we do all need prayers. Well, maybe you need something you need a brothers and sisters to pray over and pray for. And you let that be enough to sing this 